So the first use case is to automate data integration. What we're talking about here is further automating how the workflows run to give you a hands-free experience and ensure that data is always current and always available to the people who need it. When using FME Desktop on its own, say with Windows Scheduler, you do have a way to automate workflows running, but it's quite restrictive. By adding FME Server to the mix, you can set up your workflows to be event-driven, which means they can run automatically when data changes or new data becomes available or when triggered by another event. This eliminates manual intervention, saving you and your team time and effort and freeing you up for innovation. It also removes any scheduling-based delays in data integration so that data is always current and available when, where, and how it's needed for efficient operations. Here's an example of a situation where automating data integration makes a big difference. In the city of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the child abduction response team called CART wanted to enable real-time mapping and spatial data processing to help quickly deploy targeted search and rescue resources. A key component in this process is the gathering and tracking of leads, including the place last seen. When a member of the public sees something suspicious, for example, an item the child was carrying at the time, such as a backpack, they call 911 and the dispatcher enters the information into the leads tracker. After this information is entered, their last known location is saved in the SQL database as lat long coordinates. This information used to be manually mapped in ArcGIS Online for the CART team to see. To automate this, they've implemented FME to process and map incidents, leads, and assets. For example, FME connects the lead tracking SQL database to ArcGIS Online and keeps the map up to date with new information reported by the public. The webhook triggers the script to run on FME server, which creates a vertex from the lat long and buffers it by a quarter mile and writes both to the map. The map shows the place last seen and the buffer, enabling the team to focus initial search efforts within that area. Automatically generating maps frees their GIS team to focus on tasks that depend on human judgment, like verifying leads before they get mapped. Using FME ensures the spatial data is mapped more accurately and efficiently. Data is processed and sent to ArcGIS Online within seconds, enabling CART members to see critical real-time data from the command center to help recover a missing child. If you're interested about this story, you can watch the full presentation on demand. And the link for that is provided at the bottom of this slide, alongside additional resources to help you get started with automating your own data integration workflows using FME Server and the Automations GUI. You can check out these articles in the community and other inspirational customer stories to give you more ideas. So here's our first poll question for you. Would you find value in implementing event-driven workflows at your organization? So we do have a lot of people who are gonna be thinking about this more and uh, quite a number of you that want to apply this to several projects. All right, so yes, um, as Aaron mentioned, this is FME Workbench. This is the environment where you would be offering your workflows. So the demo that we're gonna be showing quickly is building your first automation. But before we can do that, you first have to build a workflow in FME Workbench. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, this is where you would add your readers. These are these guys here, the orange things, your transformers, which are the blue guys in the middle, and then your writers to have an output on the end. We're not going to dive too deep into this workspace, but at a high level, basically what we're doing is reading in CAD files, validating the geometry, writing valid features to our database, and then writing invalid features to an HTML report and a CAD file that will return. So since this has already been prepared for us, all we need to do is publish this to FME server using the publish to FME server button. From there, we just have to walk through the, the publish FME server wizard. You select your connection. If you have multiple, you can choose in be from between them. In this case, we're just going to the server that I already have configured, upload it to or publish to the workspace and the repository that you choose. This is very similar to just saving a file. In my case, that data validation FMW already exists in that repository. So I'll just overwrite it. Then you can choose your FME server services. And we'll touch more on these when we look at FME server apps. So for now, we'll just leave them as is. Once that's been published, you'll see in the translation log that um, you get the URL of the direct link and the FME server. I already have this open up on this screen. So we'll open up FME server and this is the web UI. Now, this is just the landing page. You can run workspaces in, a multiple, in multiple ways, including the run workspace page, using automations, server apps, and, and more. We're gonna be focusing on building an automation. So let's go to the automation, build automations page. And you'll notice that it's very similar to Workbench where you're welcomed with a getting started uh, splash screen that tells you kind of how to get things working. 
What we're going to be doing in this demo is setting up a trigger to watch a directory, which is currently located on this FME server. So we'll just choose the directory modified. We'll point it to that directory, which is in data, and it's in my directory into the submissions folder. So we'll watch this submissions folder and we're going to watch it every 10 seconds. So every 10, 10 seconds, we're going to check to see has a new file been added or has a file been overwritten. So we'll go ahead and apply that. So at this point, we've prepared the automation to watch the directory. Now we'll simply add an action. And while, while we're at this stage, um, automations are very similar to the Workbench environment where you simply just drag and drop nodes and connect them with connections. Um, instead of having readers, transformers, and writers, we have triggers, actions, and external actions. Now, the action that we're going to perform here is run a workspace. We're simply going to point to the workspace that we just uploaded to FME server, which is this data validation FMW. Here you can configure the parameters just like you would on any other workspace in FME Workbench. Um, with the source Autodesk file, we're actually going to be watching that directory so we can set it to that uh, file that will be uploaded using this file path output key. So we'll go ahead and click apply and you'll notice that the workspace has been successfully loaded. So we'll start the automation. First, we have to give it a name, seven reasons webinar, Tags are optional. If you want to keep them organized, you can set those. So we'll go ahead and click OK. At this point, our automation is now running. So we can go to our resources folder, and this would be on the user's end. Again, this can be any directory that FME server can access. Could be a shared directory, could even be a Dropbox or an FTP site. So we'll go into the submissions folder, the source file. We'll drag in an example of a DWG file. Now, I know this file has bad uh, bad geometry, so this will intentionally fail in the workspace, and we'll get an output in the process folder. Again, this um, doesn't necessarily have to be a server or a, a folder on the server. This could go out to a Dropbox or an FTP, or simply just live on the server itself. So this is just, just going to take a couple of minutes to, or a couple of moments to process because we're watching every 10 seconds, and then we need a little bit of time for the workspace to actually run. So we'll hop in, and just like that, the workspace has now completed, and we'll see that there's an invalid submissions DWG, a valid submissions DWG, and a validation HTML report. We'll take a look, closer look at the validation HTML report when we look at server apps as well. So I think we can pass it back to Tina now. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. While I do that, there was a question that came in that said, can directory to, or like the directory watch trigger, or automation um, watch an S3 bucket. S3 buckets, right on. Let's check that out. So yes, there are a number of different triggers you can set. S3 bucket modified is definitely one of those options. You can also set it to SNS topics, SQS, Azure grid events, and even receiving an email can be an option as well. Mm -hmm.